Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So some of you are going to be looking now and thinking, oh, she's got Stampin' Up! products. This is unusual. Yes, it is, but I'm very, very excited. So I, one of the best things about doing crafting and being on social media and sharing your products is you get to meet, um, projects, sorry, you get to meet lots and lots of um, people. And I can very confidently say I've got a really nice handful of um, virtual friends. So people I've never met face to face, but I speak to quite regularly on Facebook and we message and we check in and we see how each other are, how each other are, how each other is. And it's just really, really nice. And I've been asked to do numerous mini projects, you know, over the last 18 months and stuff. And um, it's just really fun. And I was um, last year, um, made friends with Kaylee from Create with Kaylee, who is a fantastic stamping up demonstrator and she's been doing it for the last five years. And um, she reached out to me and um, you know expressed her her love for paper craft and she liked what I done and if I would like to um, have some goodies and create with them. And of course, you know, we all want nice things to, to play with and stuff. So um, I was super pleased to to get on board and, and do that with her and so we're doing this kind of like little collaboration so I urge you all to go check out her social media her blog all those links will be shared below here she does a lot of Facebook live as well and she really knows what she's doing she creates some beautiful um, projects um, so yeah definitely go over there and also stay tuned for some future collaborations which will be happening very very soon but that's all I'm going to tell you um, but I'm really excited with what's coming there as well so I got to choose what I wanted and I loved the oh so um, eclectic I do love stamping up I have expressed that um, if I wasn't living in China stamping up being a stamping up demonstrator is possibly something that I would do um, because yeah their stuff's just amazing and yeah I love it so um, I chose the Oso, um, Oso Eclectic so I got this ribbon which is the I think I did say in another tutorial so actually this is the first of three but I've done it last so um, I've used all of this mainly berry burst there we go so it's this beautiful fabric ribbon here and then I have the framelets here which are the eclectic layers thinlets sorry um been using loads of these so i've really really enjoyed that and then this is the stamp set which is the oh so eclectic and these have been my favorites these these kind of ones here i love that kind of um blended um faded kind of look there um so that's those ones and then got the paper pack so like i said this is the last thing that I've made but it's the first tutorial so I've actually used most of the papers these are the only ones I've got left and I've got a little bit of this one here but just to show you some of these here I mean they're, they're gorgeous I always love their papers they all match they all um, uh, you know correspond to each other when they're folded over so again if you were making a bag with that that matches really nicely and then this one here and then it's got that really fun print on the back there and on the backs of all of them first column is in English and it lists all of the colours um, and the ink pads that match. Now I do have quite a lot of the Stampin' Up! Um, ink pads because I do they are really nice and they're easy to get the refills and stuff um, but I didn't have a, the in colours which are actually going to be going I, I believe very soon it's like lemon line twist and things like that which were used to match this but I have used for the projects I'm going to show you I have used um, these ones so I've used rich razzleberry, perfect plum, pumpkin pie and garden green um, and I think they've worked just as well with this as well because a lot of the colours do still work well together even if they're not the ones that they state so yes but obviously you can make this project it doesn't have to be with Stampin' Up um, you know um, supplies um, but um, they are good to use <laughs> so like I said I will share all of the links so if you do want to purchase any of this stuff go via Kaylee's um, page and you can shop with her and um, yeah it's uh it's it's worthwhile especially just maybe treating yourself to the odd bit every month um or every now and then is good anyway enough of me rambling on this is what we are going to make today so this is this gorgeous tuxedo um what would you call it um explosion box card kind of thing and this is what we're going to do so oh <laughs> 
I don't, I didn't even stick that one down, it's not even got glue. I must have just been playing around with where that one was going to go. I think actually that one was going there, yeah, to kind of bring that one forward a little bit. But you can see here, now what I am going to do for this one is I'm going to shrink it down. Because I made this and then, do you know what, to put that in an envelope you're going to need a big A4 envelope. Which is okay, it's a white, um, you know, the big white A4 one. So if you do want to make this size and you're not bothered about having to put it in one of those big envelopes, your piece will be five and three quarters, even six inches high. But the other measurement that I give in a minute will be the same and the scoring will be the same and everything else. But if you do want a tall one, but this one here is just a decorative kind of like vase of flowers that my mum has got in her craft room. So it just stands up there and it's just gorgeous. I love how it just all stands around, kind of balances off, you know, dangles around, moves around and things like that. It's just really, really fun. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed making this. If I just bring it up there, you can see you're just lovely. It's one of the sentiments, that's the ribbon. And then it just folds over at the front just, just to create this kind of tuxedo look. Now they can be pointy at the back as well, but I've not done that. I've just kept mine completely flat. Okay, so, and I do love a, an explosion boxed box card. So I'll probably use that one on this one actually. So you are going to need for this one, let me just bring over only a few bits and pieces because the main part of it all is the stamping and there is a bit of fussy cutting as well if you want to do it the way I've done it. So I've got some acetate, this is just the front um, packaging from a die set that I received but it's really really strong um, so I'm going to be using that to um, stick all the flowers down. Then you are going to need, let's just grab my scoreboard here. So I'm going to be making this one so that it fits inside a 6x8 envelope. So it's the second to last one here. So if you've got the envelope punch board, whether it be a stamping up punch board or this one here which I've got which is the We Are Memory Keepers and there's also other brands as well. But it's the one to fit the card size which is 6x8. That telling you that you need a piece of paper that's 11 by 11 and then you will use, do your first score line at four and seven eighths of an inch, okay? So I just thought it would just be a bit more easy for people um, to do it a little bit smaller rather than the big one that I have done. Um, so the case uh, here is gonna be four by 10 and a half. So yours will be the same width, 10 and a half, but it will be by six rather than four if you want to create this same size here, okay? Then you need two pieces of uh, two and three eighths of an inch by three and seven eighths of an inch. And these are gonna be to decorate the front. And then when we cut the bits out here, they will be on the piece that we're gonna fold over. And then I've just rubbed some of my rich razzleberry over some card and that is going to be what I, I'm going to um, stamp my little sentiment and then it's going to be framed with that colour there. And you can see how that matches nicely, it pulls out the colour there. Okay, so first of all, scoring along this piece here, which is a ten and a half inch side, you want to score at two and a half, five, seven and a half and ten. Okay, and that's it, that's all we need to score. So it's very, very easy, you get rid of all of that that just to one side. So now if we burnish these score lines, I'm just going to do this, I'm not going to use my bone tool. So that back piece there is what is going to stick it together, okay? And then this is going to be on a, you know, a, a diamond shape, like so. So a normal pop-up box card would be like this, okay? But this one is going to be like that. So when it folds flat, that width, that width, <laughs> That width is um, obviously going to be going into the envelope. So you don't want any of the bits that are going to be your flowers or whatever it is you're using. You don't want them really coming over to the left or to the, the right, to the left or the right too much, because otherwise they won't fit in the envelope. So that's going to be like that. And then this bit here is where we're going to do a little cut down here and then fold it over, and that's going to create that like tuxedo um, style. So like the lapel of a jacket is is where this. Um, name comes from. So all I'm going to do, it's entirely up to you how far down you want to go. So on this one here, I see see how far down I went on this one. So it was, I cut down two inches, but obviously that was a much, much taller um, piece of card. So two inches, again, if you're doing this style, I'm gonna do one inch on this one here. So with your piece of card, 
you've got your tab at the top here and you've got one, two, three, four rectangles. The middle of those four, that's where you want to go down, okay? So I'm just using my ruler with one inch and I'm just going to pop a little pencil mark just down there, okay? And that's where I'm going to cut down to, like so, okay, like that. And then what I'm going to do is grab my stylus again, grab my ruler and using the thinner end from that pencil mark up to the top of the other side I'm just going to score like, oh, like so. Okay, so I've just scored from where I've cut down up there and then do the same on the other side. This just helps you fold it over. You don't have to do this. If you want to just fold it straight over, you can, but I just find you get a much nicer crease and finish if you do it with a score line, like so. And then just carefully put that over like so. Now, the other thing you can do is, just do that one there, is you can leave them like that. So when we fold this all round in a minute, we'll stick all that down. You can leave them just kind of up like that. Because I guess a collar, it is kind of, loosely, maybe I'll leave that one actually, now looking at it, I might just leave it white, because what I've done is on this one here is I've stuck it down, okay, so that's what it looks like stuck down with the white border, or we can leave it up, so I think I'm going to leave this one up for the purposes of the video so you get to see what it looks like both ways, so that's that piece there, then we've got these two pieces that we cut down, and obviously they're going to go inside, so if I just bring that one back up, they're going to go like so, now what you want to do, because this will have a little white frame around it, is lie this piece over and where I've just got that pencil mark on the card behind, I'm just going to put the same on my paper here. Okay, there, I've just put a little pencil mark there, which is the same as where that pencil, you could just get your ruler and just measure one inch down. I'm then going to start cutting a little bit down from that again, so maybe another one inch down from that pencil mark, but up to that point and basically now I can sit that underneath in that piece and still have that nice white frame around it because I come down by one eighth of an inch you just get it and then that can come over the top there and you see you get that fitting perfectly then with your second piece again pop it in and just do the same or just bring your ruler and just measure one inch down but obviously you want to do it on the you know, so on this one I've done it on the uh, left hand side, on this one I'm doing it on the right hand side. And again, I'm just going to come down by about one eighth of an inch and just cut up again. And that one will sit inside like so. And those can just then kind of freely hang like so. So again, then these bits here will be able to, how did I do it? Oh no, I didn't, I used different pieces again. I was thinking then I could use them. No, I did. <laughs> Doing it on the wrong side. Yeah, so the, okay, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Right, let's get these stuck down. So I'm going to grab my, just going to use my tear tape for this. Okay, piece. So they are so, now stuck down. So you can see already now how that looks like the collar at the top. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a really nice, different way to just change up a normal um, pop up box card. So now I'm just going to rub out that little pencil mark. This is optional if you want to pop this on top, but basically that one was cut off of the left hand side, so it's now going to go upside down and then go on to the right hand side. And if you just pop it in, again giving yourself that same kind of white border like you did before, and then with a pencil mark, I'm just going to put a pencil down here. So I'm coming in by about a quarter of an inch, okay, down here. And then again, just cut all the way along like so, so you can see what I've just cut off there. This piece now will sit inside like so. You can see there what I've done. Okay, and you get that really nice little frame. So that's that one. And then again, just rub off. I think I end up cutting that off anyway. And all I'll do now is with this piece is just flip it over, pop it on top like so. And then I can just cut down right next to it. And that way you know that you've got two pieces the same. So now they will both sit 
like so. So I'm going to use my wet glue now because I've got these really tiny now little points. Now we can points. see how the front of that's all come together really nicely. Now we can stick down the back here as well. I'm going to use um, some red tape for this just because it's the main frame. I just want to make sure it obviously stays nice and strong. So I'm just going to run it along the score line there. So I know I get a nice join. Just make sure you get all the air bubbles out. I'm going to get glue on my jumper. Okay. Turn it over, bring that side down, and then fold this one over, and it should all join up perfectly, like so. And now you've got the base, the shell of your pop-up Okay, card. so the next piece okay. you need, which I forgot to mention, is this piece here. So this is, what I find is, what you would usually do with a normal square um, pop-up card is it would obviously be this way and you would then attach pieces of cardboard, maybe two or three, inside here and they'd obviously all be parallel with each other and facing this way and then you'd slot in all of your bits and pieces. But because this sits this way and it's a, it's a diamond shape, some people still stick with having those um, bits of card going this way but what I found is that a lot of those whatever you've got stuck just tends to just face this off in this direction here and obviously I want it all facing front right in front of me so what I've done and what I have done in with previous ones that I've made this way is just have one piece like this now this is four and a quarter by I think it was one and a half yeah um, yeah one and a half be fine well this is one and a quarter I guess because this is smaller so do one and a quarter Score at half inch on each side, so it was scored at um, half an inch and then at three and uh, three and three quarters, I think. Yeah, so half an inch and then three and three quarters, okay. And then basically, what we're going to do is I'm going to use some wet glue. It's best to use wet glue on this bit so you've got room to move it around because you're going to be popping it inside. And if you use the um, red tape, you just, yeah, if you get a little bit of it stuck wrong, then you'll just throw it across the room like I've done before. So use the wet glue. I've probably used a bit too much, so let's just take some of that off. So, so I've got no ha no hairs on my hands because I've put so much glue on them over the years that it uh, all comes off. Okay, like so, glue's facing me. You're then going to, it's gonna be arched like this and it's gonna sit inside. So I'm gonna stick this in first. It is a little bit fiddly, but it's worth it. And that's why it's best using the wet glue. So get one side in. Now you want to make sure that it comes down so it's below this piece here. So look, if I put that completely on its side now, you can't see it. So it's got to come down below this point. And that's about it. Just make sure it comes down below that point. And then you want to make sure that you spread it out so that when you close this card, it goes flat with it as well. So I've probably gone in, let me just bring that over bit more there we go that's why it's good to use the wet glue because I can just lift it off like so so basically when that folds flat that's what you want it to be like but when it opens can you see it creates that and it means that you can put your things all around there and they will all face this way rather than go off that way so I much much prefer this now if you want to do an even smaller one in here you can do another one you can put another little arch inside that bit but what I tend to do is I stick flowers on this actual piece of card here that I want right at the front all the ones in the middle go on that piece of card and then anything on the back is actually stuck on the back of this so I find one is all you need um, I'm just going to cut off I've got a little bit of sticky tape poked out the top there there we go right now we can get it all um, all the flowers put in place I'm going to leave that to one side so I have already stamped and die cut lots of bits because I had already made the other two projects which are going to follow this week so I had other bits from other things that I've made and um, yeah I've figured you know don't waste it so I got the same card that I used to make the actual base and I have used these three here which are this one this one and this little one here and that's the little detail. And now there are framelets, thinlets, framelets, um, for the little piece and for the leaves. But for this particular flower, which is this one here, there is no die to cut it. So I have fussy cut all of these. Now if you want to do um, 
this one here, you can stamp this one and there is a die for that one. But actually, I know it doesn't really look it here, but this is smaller than this one. So the die would kind of fit around this, but you'd lose a lot of the outer detail. So if you do want to do this and you're like, oh God, I hate fussy cutting, don't want to do it, you can still do it, but use this flower instead and it will still look lovely. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what they stamp like, but I think I've got enough here for this smaller card, but I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the big one, two, four, I'm using six for the smaller one, okay? And I'm using more greenery, greenery whereas on this one I added in some purple as well. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to on this one. So just to show you what they look like, I've got the um, perfect plum here and just ink that one up and pop that one there. And you can see, you get that gorgeous effect. I just love it. I think it's really nice, really subtle, looks really nice. And if you, um, so if I stamp again, like so, and then stamp it off and you can get just two different styles but they work really well together so there's a slightly faded one there so that's that one um, then the I use the garden green for the leaf leaves so again that one stamp it off to get a lighter impression and you can give yourself two different greens there but from the same ink pad. So again, if you're doing foliage and you just want to have that kind of, you've only got one green, just stamp off each time and you'll get really nice results. So these just all worked really, really well together. So I've gone ahead, like I said, and I've die cut um, the leaves and then stamped all the little detail in the middle. Um, and that is using, um, oh, where's my leaf from gone? Oh, it's inside. It's falling out. I thought, oh gosh, I've lost it already. Yeah, this one here. Okay, so that's the one now that you just sit over the top, run that through your dye machine, and you'll get all of these. Um, again, I've used this a lot. It's already all coming off. And then the other one, this is the outer um, die to cut that other stamped image that I just said, which is that one there. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's too small for that one. So, and then there's this tiny little one here, and that's to cut these little bits here, which you can see I've mounted on some foam, and now it's given them that 3D look inside. And I'm going to finish that off with some Wink Stella as well, painted over the top, which is what I've done on the finished one. Okay, so that's all the bits and pieces there. In terms of the leaves, I have cut out... Um, Oh gosh, I mean, I'm probably going to maybe use two on maybe half of the flowers, so that's six, and then one on them. So maybe nine, cut ten out. Um, things like this, I always say, you know, if you're bored, just cut a load of them and you've got them in your stash because they're great for cards and things like that. So that's that. Then I've got the acetate here. So I kind of don't really want to give a measurement of what length acetate you need because every card is kind of different it's I cut it as I need it as I go along so as I make this I'm going to tell you the kind of length of the acetate I'm using because it's you know it depends how high you want it and, and bits and pieces like that everybody's is different but I'm always going to do them about half an inch in width okay so what I'm going to do is just cut some half inch strips of this very strong acetate so don't throw away packaging, it's so handy for um, things like this, for your craft room. Um, so I've got six flowers, so I need six pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, and I'll just take off the end bits there. So I'm just going to trim. And I'll probably use the full width for a couple of them at the back. And then the ones at the front are cut, obviously, down, so they're much shorter. But that piece inside is one and a half inches um, wide, that piece of card there. Um, and I've done it quite thick because it just gives you more of a surface area to stick this acetate against. And whenever I'm using the acetate, I always use the red tape because it's nice and strong and it sticks to the acetate really well. Okay, so there's my, sticks, my six strips. So first of all, I'm going to have... A purple one and I want this purple one to be right down here at the bottom we only see maybe about half an inch of the acetate and I'm gonna have two of these stuck behind so I'm gonna have one 
like so and one like that. Okay, so I'm going to put a blob of glue on my, I'm just going to put a bit there, maybe put a little bit like so and so that one is going to go like that and then this one because I've just put glue, I'll put a little bit more on there actually and again don't you know you don't have to be too particular with it because if you want it to look kind of well it's paper but as natural as you can be they you know leaves are everywhere aren't they so it doesn't matter too much then on the very top of this acetate I'm going to stick coming down by about half an inch just stick a piece on the top there peel that off and just stick it across like so, okay. And then this one is going to stick obviously on this front piece of card at the front, like so. So I only need the tiniest, I'm going to cut now, so I've got about an inch there coming down, okay. And then coming up by about half an inch, I'm going to stick again some of the red. So this is what I mean, it's, it's hard to really give it exact, oh, exact measurements because some of you might not want to put one right at the front there. Um, these are very easy to just then do however you want. Okay, so because we've got the score line in the middle there, I'm still going to stick it right in the middle because the acetate bends and it will actually help that card kind of go into that shape when whoever gets it opens it up. So I have still stuck it right in the middle of that score line, okay? Because it's only going to come out to that shape you can see now that looks really nice in the middle, okay? So that's the only one that's probably going to be stuck on the front. Now the other four I'm going to do on that curved piece and then the last two I'm going to stick on the back. So now I'm going to do this um, red, um, it's not red, what colour was that? Because it looks, I think I must have mixed it actually with, I think I stamped in the purple and then I stamped it onto the peekaboo peach. No, pumpkin pie and it's come out with this kind of colour here. So again, you know, you can really kind of mix it up and add whatever you want there. Um, with whatever papers it is that you're using. So again, I'm going to add a little bit, about half an inch each time to stick onto the flower. And I'm going to add, you can always add more leaves on as well once it's all in place. So if you think, oh, I've got a bit of a blank area, you know, it's a bit, bit sparse there, then you can just add the leaves in again later. But I'm just going to add one on this one and then take off the backing here and remember what I said about making sure that your, your leaves don't go too off to the left or the right because it won't fit in your envelope so I want the cluster of them to stay quite you know within the um, this shape here this width so that one there is going to go like so and if you hold it up like this you can kind of move it up and down so I want this kind of leaf to still kind of cover it a bit but I think there is about right. So I've got my thumb over the back piece, so when I pull it out now I can see that this area here is what's going to be glued down, so I'm just going to trim off about an inch. So the one going behind is now a piece of acetate that measures three and a half inches. Okay, so if you are following along, and then again I'm now putting my tape over the last half inch, it's now three inches of it is what's obviously going to be, you know, hanging up. Um, hanging up, you know, hanging around, like dangling. So now I can stick that behind or in front, it's entirely up to you, that piece of card like so. Now if I bring that over you can see we're starting to come up. So now the ones behind will come up there like so. But already that's starting to come along. So I'm going to go and stick the other three along this piece here and then I'll give you the measurements of what I've used for okay. that. So you can see now where I've stuck them all in. So I actually put three in the middle, so I realised I had six, not seven for some reason. I said I was going to put four in the middle. Three's fine, and then I've got two on the back and the one on the front. So you can see where I've stuck them. These ones are all pretty much the same, so that's three and a half inch. And then these are again three and a half inch, but obviously I've just brought them up higher on that back piece. You can see where they're stuck inside here. Okay, so I thought I'd do all the flowers, and then with all those kind of blank spaces, and bits here I can add the flowers but again when this is folded flat so if I just bring that down I 
think even that one there, I'm going to have to maybe move that one's fine on that side. Just check your envelope because you don't want it to overhang too much, otherwise you're just going to have to make a bigger envelope, that's all. So again, when that comes up, it's all okay. So let me just grab some more of these and I'm just going to go around now and just add them. If you lie it flat, you can see where you can add in. So I could add something in there, just stick it in place. Um, again, just add a bit of glue here. I can put that one in there. And it's much, much easier. I can have something down here to hide the, the plastic there as well from the, the acetate. So. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So it's kind of, like I said at the beginning, it's kind of hard to really tell you where to put things and how you want it because everybody's different. But when I lie that down flat, I can see I've kind of covered all of like the background. So I've got this, you know, my shape around here, but you can't see through it. I mean, I could put something else there if I want, but when it's up like so, you don't see that bit anyway. So I'm quite happy. You can see how that all looks. I think it looks gorgeous. It's a really, really, I, again, I just love this style card. So now it's just the little sentiment. So for this one here, I am going to use, um, gosh, uh, what should I do? I'm gonna do, oh, hello, friend. Um, so this one here, and I'm gonna stamp it in, um, I think I'm gonna stamp it in Knight of Navy, because that is one of the corresponding colors. And um, I can get a go quite nicely. So I'm just going to stamp it here, like so. And they're lovely, cute little sentiments. And I'm just going to get that um, okay, cut out. I'm just going to pop a little bit of this glue that's left on my hand before it dries up. And then with that piece of paper that I just covered with the rich razzleberry. I'm just gonna frame the top left hand side there of my sentiment. And then just cut the rest of that out. Okay, so that's that one now, all ready. And then I've just made myself a little bow and I've got some foam backing here. I always find the foam um, fits re um, sticks really well to your ribbon so just pop that fat that side looks better <laughs> that's more finished so I will stick it on this side here and that bow is going to go right underneath that flower right in the very very top there so it kind of needs to stick kind of goes under the lapel I'm just going to fold that flat a minute just so I can stick that in place like so Straighten that all up. And then the little sentiment here is again going to go on some foam. It only needs a little bit because again it is kind of sitting on the score line. So I'm going to just put it right down the middle like so. And again lie it down flat. And it's going to sit. Let me just grab my tweezers. So I'm going to push it right up kind of over the bow a little bit, Ooh, the right way, like so, so like that and kind of pushed up in the middle, there we go. Isn't that a gorgeous card? Now what you can do is write to and from, you've got room for your sentiment if you want to put more fat and um, more fabric, more um, coloured um, DSP is the word I'm looking for on the back here. You can do, you see the back's all nice and neat as well. And I just think it's a glorious card. So let's check the measurements of this one and the envelope because obviously I will have to make one for this. So it is coming in at, um, well it's gonna be an eight and a half inch envelope. So that's perfect because you don't wanna go any higher than that because eight and a half is the highest measurement you've got. So it's gonna be eight and a half there and then it's probably going to be the six inch. Well, actually, I'm going to have to move that up a bit. Yeah, I can get it to six. So I, like I said, I'm going to move that. What that leave there is just going to come up a bit. You don't want to go too far past the the widest part of whatever the base is of your card. Okay, so I want that one to come in at six, and then I can use the six by eight and a half on my envelope punch board. Okay, so I've still got a nice envelope for that as well. But there you have it. So I've made lots of mess. I've had lots of fun creating these. I do enjoy these. These and shaker cards 
are big favourites of mine. So you've got this one here, which is more of a decorative piece. So if you just want a nice vase effect, um, just for your craft room, then go for this. Or if you're happy to put it in a very large um, white envelope, then fine. But I'm still going to add more to this, um, I think, because it's definitely got the room. And I've got these spare leaves now as well, so I can decorate that up a bit more. And then you've got the gorgeous little one here. They are stronger when they're on shorter bits of acetate as well. So that's another one is make sure you use a nice strong acetate. I've probably gone a bit too high up with these so I might shrink the back ones down a little bit as well. But lots of tips, lots of ways and things that you can do with them and I hope that you've learnt a bit from me today, enjoyed what I've made. Um, I've got two more projects that I'm going to be doing this week with this um, this kind of kit I guess that I've got and um, I hope you enjoy those as well. Like I said do check out, pop on over um, to Kaylee's social media channels, all of that will be shared below and I'll be continuing to share all of that throughout this week. Um, but until then, please give me a nice thumbs up if you enjoyed today and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you get to see more. Thanks for watching guys, bye.